This is the story of Gypsy Rose Blanchard, and while it is sort of a current event, it is also a tale that took place some time ago. And you know, to get things into context, I'll begin with the story of what happened and then bring you up to date on what is happening in the case as we speak. And then I will give a little insight into the mental health aspect of this as I do have experience. So, you know, we'll get to my opinion at the end. So, Gypsy Rose is the daughter of Dee Dee Blanchard and Rob Blanchard. And back in 1991, Rod was in high school, he was 17 years old, and he got together with 24-year-old Dee Dee. Now, you know, to me, that raises some concerns and also kind of gives us a little bit of a setup as to um, Dee Dee's eventual control, utter control, of Gypsy. Dee Dee rapidly became pregnant, you know, like within a couple months of the two being together, and Rod married Dee Dee at his age of 17. On Rod's 18th birthday, he realized that this was not the life that he wanted, that he had gotten married for the wrong reasons. He wasn't in love with Dee Dee. He did remain an active parent for Gypsy until Gypsy was about 10 years old, at which point Gypsy and Dee Dee moved to Missouri from Louisiana. It's kind of complicated. You see, when Gypsy was only three months old, Dee Dee, who has experience as a nurse, started bringing the baby into the ER and such, saying that she thought the baby had sleep apnea. She was worried that the baby was going to succumb to SIDS. And her concerns grew greater and greater, and she began telling Rod that she thought that the baby had some sort of chromosomal um, abnormalities, that she had, oh, various illnesses and things wrong with her, and Rod had no reason to doubt her. Putting Dee Dee up on a pedestal, giving her extra attention, saying what a wonderful mom taking care of this child with these disabilities. The problem was Gypsy did not actually have any of these disabilities. Gypsy was brought up believing that she had various illnesses and even that her age was different from what it was. Dee Dee was a very overbearing mom. She used physical punishments. She administered medicines that made Gypsy sick. And with her training as a nurse, Dee Dee was able to convince medical professionals that Gypsy had a variety of problems, epilepsy, uh, even leukemia. And in actuality, it appears that Dee Dee likely had what is commonly known as Munchausen syndrome by proxy. And in that case, she would be making Gypsy sick. Dee Dee kept taking Gypsy to different doctors and getting different diagnosis and medical treatments. And eventually the doctors in Louisiana were beginning to get suspicious. Fortunately for Dee Dee's scheme, and unfortunately for Gypsy's life, Hurricane Katrina came into play. The home that they lived in was destroyed. They went to a Red Cross shelter, and there Dee Dee was explaining that Gypsy had all these medical conditions and that she didn't have her birth certificate anymore. She didn't have her medical records, etc. These things had all been destroyed in the hurricane. Then Dee Dee and Gypsy relocated to Missouri. Habitat for Humanity built them a home in Springfield, Missouri, pink house, and it had wheelchair ramps because by this time, Dee Dee had everyone convinced 
that Gypsy could not walk and that Gypsy had, you know, severe epilepsy, asthma, a variety of uh, conditions that, for instance, required the removal of salivary glands. And Gypsy had to eat with a feeding tube. You know, everyone was supporting Dee Dee and Gypsy. Dee Dee had everyone convinced that Gypsy was also uh, developmentally delayed, that she had the mental acuity of a seven-year-old, you know, while she was a teen or older than a teen in actuality. And Gypsy did not think to uh, contradict her mom at all. She didn't walk in public. She didn't let anyone know she walked. Her father, Rod, uh, actually thought that Gypsy was wheelchair bound, etc. And Dee Dee convinced Gypsy that she was several years younger than she was. Rod remembers Gypsy's birthday, her 18th birthday. Dee Dee told him, convinced him that, oh, don't do that. Don't bring up her age because that would only confuse Gypsy because Gypsy thinks she's 14. Meanwhile, Gypsy was maturing and getting drives and desires that, you know, were appropriate for her actual chronological age. Dee Dee didn't like this at all. At one point when Gypsy was in reality 19 years old, they went to a sci-fi convention where Gypsy met a man who was 34 or 35 years old and they hit it off. Gypsy decided to run away with this guy. She put on a wig and, oh yeah, Gypsy was bald because her mom kept shaving her head and telling everyone that she had leukemia. Anyhow, Gypsy took off with this guy and Dee Dee went and forged her birth certificate to make it look like she was several years younger because in actuality she was 19 years old. And Dee Dee got everyone searching, convinced that Gypsy uh, was mentally seven and that she was underaged. So they tracked the couple down at a hotel and Dee Dee hauled Gypsy back and convinced the man as well that Gypsy was not 19. She was a minor. I believe she told him that she was only 14 years old. Anyhow, the man <laughs> backed right off. Dee Dee took her home, destroyed Gypsy's phone, smashed her computer, and, you know, banished her from the internet. This was like 2010, 2011. And she actually strapped Gypsy to her bed and had her, like, tied to the bed. And according to Gypsy, there was uh, some physical abuse as well, as her mom was raining down the fire and brimstone on her and stuff, telling her what a scarlet woman she was, etc., Eventually, around 2012, Gypsy regained access to the internet and she created online profiles because she had a shared Facebook account with her mom, which is going to come into play later. But she had her own accounts secret that her mom didn't know about. And in these different settings, Gypsy could live out a rich fantasy life where she pretended to be your average young woman. And she met a man named Nicholas John, And Nicholas lived in Wisconsin. And the two of them were on a Christian chat group. And quickly they branched off to having an online relationship together which quickly escalated to a cyber sexual relationship and, you know, quite racy and they incorporated role playing and it was a really, really intense relationship and especially intense in that, you know, they were both living out fantasies. They were both extremely susceptible. Gypsy was trapped. She was a prisoner in her home. She was controlled by her mother. She was not allowed to have a life of her own. 
and she was aware she knew that she was capable of eating but she was having to use a feeding tube she knew that she could walk but she was being forced to use a wheelchair but she didn't dare speak out against her mom she didn't know who she could trust she didn't think that she could confide in her father even because Dee Dee had convinced her that her father didn't care etc gypsy began to see nick as her knight in shining armor etc and nick well he is on the autism spectrum and he also had a fantasy life of his own had gotten into trouble because of inappropriate behavior in public and um, you know he did not have i guess normal social cues or anything like that and it turns out that he has the to this day has um a low iq to where he's operating on about a 10 year old's level with his problem solving with you know his ability to reason through things and that's going to come into play too nick made a trip to missouri to meet gypsy and the two of them arranged to meet up at a movie theater gypsy went to the movies with her mom and nick sat next to gypsy in the theater when her mom was on the other side of her and her mom thought nick was kind of creepy or whatever and gypsy and nick slipped away at one point and had intimate relations in the public restroom and nick ended up going back to wisconsin and then they were playing the part of the um, star-crossed lovers because Dee Dee didn't like nick thought he was a creeper and was not gonna be allowing any kind of friendship or anything between these two and you know of course the gypsy had not informed her mom that she was in fact in touch with nick that she knew him or anything like that so the two working on their rich fantasy life we're talking again about how gypsy was trapped they would never be able to be together as long as dd was alive and the two came up with a plan not just to run away but because gypsy had attempted to run away before and dd Dee Dee had gotten a hold of her and brought her back and her situation was even worse more dire after that they decided that Dee Dee was going to have to die and nick made the journey to missouri gypsy actually shoplifted a knife for him to use on her mother that he apparently had requested this specific kind of knife and being on the spectrum you know that kind of pans out that he might have something very particular that he had in mind anyway gypsy spent the day with her mom and the two of them like had a girls night did their nails and stuff like that and gypsy tucked her mom in bed and told her mom she was gonna be a good girl and when her mom nodded off to sleep gypsy called nicholas said her mom was asleep come on over and he arrived at the house gypsy greeted him at the door and gave him the knife and some duct tape to i guess um muffle her mom and then gypsy went and hid in the bathroom said that she plugged her ears so she wouldn't have to listen while nick went in and stabbed her mom to death stabbed her multiple times and then when dd was dead he went and got gypsy and gypsy um tended to his wound he had cut his finger and then the two of them had intimate relations on gypsy's bed and later gypsy gave the story that nick had been fantasizing about um having his way with gypsy's mom either before she was dead or after she was dead either way but the gypsy said that she had convinced nick to be with her instead anyway then they took money from the house and they left eventually they took a bus to wisconsin 
they got to Nick's home in Wisconsin and they were staying there and Gypsy realized that nobody had found her mom yet. So the next thing you know, there's a posting on Gypsy's mom, it was their joint account, and it said, that bitch is dead. And that raised concern. People were like, um, hey, Dee Dee, have you been hacked? What's, what's going on? And nobody heard from Dee Dee, so they were getting very concerned. And then there was another posting on the Facebook to the effect of, you know, I stabbed her, she's dead, R-worded her sweet daughter, and whatever, kind of gross stuff. The police went to the house to do the well-being check, and they discovered Dee Dee in her room, the whole bloody disgusting scene, and Gypsy missing. And at this point still, everyone thought that Gypsy was um, horribly ill and confined to a wheelchair, and so they thought she'd been kidnapped. And you know, they tracked the IP address of where the Facebook postings came from and showed up at Nicholas's home where he lived with his family. And when they went there, they found him and Gypsy there at the house, arrested them both and took them back to Missouri. Well, that was in 2015. 2016, Gypsy pled guilty to second degree murder for her part in the murder of her mother. And in exchange for her guilty plea, she was sentenced to 10 years in prison. And what she was convicted of was second degree murder. Gypsy testified at Nick's trial in 2018. And Nick was charged with first degree murder. Gypsy did say that it was her idea and that she had asked him to save her and he believed he saved Gypsy's life by taking her mother's life. It never really came out in court, his low IQ. Mainly his public defenders were going with that he was coerced or manipulated by Gypsy and they didn't really get into how mentally competent he was and so he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole convicted of first degree murder gypsy was released on the 28th of december she had served around eight years of her sentence which is 85 percent of her sentence and some people were thinking that you know this is unusual but it's not in the united states if you've got good behavior and you've served 85% of your sentence, you're eligible for parole as long as you haven't been sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Anyway, Gypsy was released and I'll get back to Gypsy in a moment. Meanwhile, Nicholas's case is being looked at again. He filed appeals or you know, his new attorneys filed appeals based on ineptitude of his previous defense and their failure to produce the information regarding his low IQ and his uh, autism. And this autism and the low IQ and the mental health issues have all been well documented prior to any of this happening. And so they were thinking that he should have been convicted of second degree rather than first degree murder and that he should have been eligible for parole. I'll just say a little bit about autism spectrum disorder right now and it would lead him to be more susceptible to manipulation. He would see things in more of a black and white concrete. He wouldn't see any gray area. He would believe that Gypsy had tried everything that she could to get away from Dee Dee and that the only way to get Gypsy away from Dee Dee would be to kill Dee Dee. And he would think that he was doing the right thing. He would think that he was saving Gypsy. And 
with the mental acuity of a 10 year old, he can't really grasp the concepts the way that someone his actual age would. And so I do believe that there was a miscarriage of justice in what his sentence was. I think that he should have been eligible for parole once he served 85% of his sentence, which I don't believe that it should be as low as what Gypsy's was. If Gypsy got 10, he should have got 15 or 20 because he's the one that actually carried it out. But the two of them planned this together and you know while he may have been coerced by Gypsy, he still did follow through and commit this crime. And so Gypsy's trying to get a new start in life. She got married like a year ago and her husband picked her up when she was released from prison and the two of them have moved to Louisiana where he's from. He's a special education teacher. They're close with Gypsy's father and her stepmother and their family. I am a bit concerned for Gypsy and hoping that she has a strong support system and that she is getting uh, mental health counseling through all of this. She's got all kinds of attention on her and while in some ways that's good, she could be getting um, an income through it and things like that, but also being put in, under this magnifying glass, living in this fishbowl, uh, could be rather taxing. And I'm not sure if she's ready for all of this exposure that she's getting. And finally, there's like all kinds of crazy rumors about Gypsy and, and, and what's going on with her, including the fact that a strip club offered her a job. And that is true, but... Gypsy turned them down. So good luck to Gypsy. And, you know, this is really a tragic story all around. All of this could have been prevented if there was, I guess, safety nets in, installed where um, people who, like, perhaps noticed something or sus were suspicious could have reported it, could have gotten Dee, Dee some help, could have got Gypsy some help. And so that's the story of Gypsy Rose Blanchard and what is going on today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.